Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to NPTEL's MOOC course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravichandran, Professor of English from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. Uh, we are already into the first week and then I have done so far three modules uh, with regard to uh, beginning with the end in mind and then planning, preparing towards uh, developing the soft skills. Now, in this module that is module number 4 of the first week, I will be focusing more on the types of soft skills, particularly those soft skills which are relevant for your self management that is developing yourself. And as I was telling you in the previous one, I am just going to use an approach where unlike the other approaches where people try to tell you do this, do that and then give some cosmetic touches, but in practice it does not really amount to development of your personality. So, here my approach is to create a kind of change in your personality, modify, develop and at the same time imbibe soft skills which will stay with you forever and which will uh, give you the intended effect in all human interaction and communication. Now, before I start, quick highlights of what we did in the previous uh, lecture. In the previous one, I highlighted to you about human perceptions and I was telling you as how human perceptions determine proper understanding in human relations. Perceptions, I said, are bound to be different and often contradictory. We see the same object, but we have two different perceptions of the same object. And then, do not be guided by prejudice, especially in human interaction. To this, uh, you should also be emotionally balanced, so that before you show your anger or before you burst out any kind of emotion on somebody's annoying behavior, find out what makes the person to behave in the first instance in such a manner. Now, I gave you the example from Stephen Covey and then uh, he makes the famous statement, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Instead of complaining that others are not understanding, first try to understand why the person is behaving in such a kind of abnormal manner that is not suiting for you. Now, this is about the previous lecture, but on the other hand, some general tips, do not be satisfied with doing the minimum required learning for this course. Then and there, I keep dropping some names, dropping some ideas, dropping some books, which you can use it for extra reading. For example, you should learn eagerly from the extra material suggested in the previous uh, two lectures. One, I mentioned about Stephen Covey's 7 Habits of Highly Effective People. I also asked you to take a look at Steve Jobs's famous commencement address at Stanford University. I hope you have done it, most of you. In case you have not done it, just uh, try to take some more time after the end of this uh, lecture, uh, buy the book and then try to watch the video. Now, in this lecture, and again before I start, you might be wondering with this question, have I taught you some soft skills so far? And if I have taught you, have you really learnt any soft skills so far? And in case you have learnt, what are they? Now, I would like to tell you, I have not overtly told you that I am going to teach you these skills and then talked about it, but in the way of introducing certain important concepts and ideas, actually I have implicitly taught some soft skills which pertain to self-management emotion regulation and time management skills. Now, again a quick recapture preview of what we have done in the perspective of soft skills will make you understand that yes indeed I have actually taught you some soft skills, but again as I said I can take the horse to the pond, but it is up to the horse to drink it or not. I have 
created an environment and awareness that these are some skills and you need to be aware of it and you need to implement that in your day to day behavior so that those skills become part of you. Now, what are the skills which I implicitly uh, try to teach you? Now, look at them. In the first module, I was trying to prepare you, fine tune you to this course and then I was trying to make you plan, plan a schedule, I said. Preparing and planning is something very important for doing this course. In the second one, I was largely focusing on self-awareness with regard to having a clear sense of purpose. We talked about beginning with the end in mind and then that end in mind is actually thinking about the end result before you begin a new task. Any task, I told you that even uh, before doing this course, ask yourself, why are you doing this course? At the end of this course, what do you expect? Do you just expect a certificate or you want something else other than the certificate? How are you going to use this? And then begin with the end in mind. What is your vision? What is your lifelong mission? Have you thought of it? If you have not done it, again, break now, take a pass, look back and then just think, what is it that you want at the end of your life? What are those four important people in your life going to tell about you? Now, those things will make a huge difference in the way you are going to plan and schedule the events of your life. Now, having said that, in the second module, broadly I was uh, talking about self-awareness, but then I also wanted you to think about the end result before beginning a new task, because this will help you in knowing, setting your priorities. Now, once you know what are your priorities, you learn to identify what are high value and low value tasks. And then slowly you also try to understand there are something like no value tasks. Spending time on that is not going to help you develop your personality or soft skills. Just eliminate that from your life, no value tasks. And then you commit to do only high value tasks. I was asking for commitment. And then you need to use willpower and perseverance to complete the tasks in time. And then I went ahead and then I was also telling you about the perceptual differences, the differences in uh, our own perceptions. So, at the end of it, I concluded by saying that it is important that you learn to empathize with others. So, empathizing itself is a kind of soft skill which you need to develop. I will talk more about that now. And uh, I am just going to highlight about nine important facets of soft skills, the nine prominent ones. Uh, you, if you just look at books, they say hundreds of skills, but in the nine broad soft skills which I have identified, all the other skills can be incorporated. And uh, in this module, let us focus on these nine skill set, which come under the self-management skill set. Okay. Now, these nine are important and at the end of it, it is not just I am telling you and you are learning and even I am not going to teach the concepts as such, I am just going to ask you questions and then these questions are rhetorical questions. That means that the answers are implicit. You know what is the right answer, you think about it and then if you think that you are not doing it, so, change that, eliminate that from your life and then try to modify accordingly. The first most important skill set that you should have in terms of self-management is self-awareness. Now, self-awareness, simply speaking that you should know yourself. The unknown uh, self is uh, 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 not something that is worth living. So, you should know first of all and if you know yourself, you will be able to conquer the world, all these things are known to you. But then think about these concepts in terms of precipitating into you, in terms of certain penetrating questions and how would you answer them. Look at some of the questions that I am going to ask you and then resolve the answers based on which you know the level of your self-awareness. If you think that you need more, keep asking the questions, make improvements. Why are you lazy? The biggest conflict resolution that you will have within yourself is trying to decide that you will overcome laziness. Okay. The day you decide you will become free, you will have more time and then you will have more tasks to do, 
you will sooner or later identify your uh, mission and then you will proceed with the vision and then you will be like happy forever. But then why are you lazy? What makes you lazy? What will make you work without expecting any reward? When you go for a job, even if it is 9 to 5 job, what will make you work beyond 5 o'clock? What will make you work without looking at your watch frequently? What is it that job that will passionately absorb you? Are you doing it? If you are not doing, why are you not doing it? So, these are the answers that will amount to your self-awareness. If you have not even thought of it, now think about it. Who or what inspires you? Is it a person? Is it the appearance of a person? And then uh, like some people uh, look at innocence of the child, they are very inspired. Some people are inspired by sunset. Nature itself is a very big inspirer. Some people are inspired by great achievements. What is it that is inspiring you? And then who or what makes you angry? Okay. So, suppose you look at somebody or something and then you feel furious. Now, what is it that, that is setting you? When do you remain calm and peaceful? What is the time that you are completely stress free? You are completely calm and peaceful. Is it early in the morning, late at night or sometime after your afternoon nap? What is the time in a day that you are calm and peaceful? How many weeks in a month that you are completely peaceful? That you do not have any stress, no problem of insomnia, you slept peacefully. How many days went like that? And then what are you afraid of? What are your fears? What are your apprehensions? When do you feel embarrassed? When you feel little bit shy and when you feel embarrassed and then you, you feel uh, somewhat shy to do certain things, when is it that happening? Why do you get frustrated? What are your driving forces? What motivates you? Is it money? Is it power? Is it some kind of beauty, some aesthetics? Is it uh, some kind of drive to change the world? Is it something that you think that you should change yourself? What is it that is driving you? Why do you postpone things? If, if you have enough motivation, why are you postponing things? Why are you not doing things in time? Why are you jealous of someone? Why are you not happy with yourself? Why do you think that somebody has got something better than you? Why are you jealous? And then, when do you appreciate someone? When do you show that you are liking some quality in someone? Are you all the time uh, preoccupied with yourself and never have time to tell someone or somebody that they are better than you? And if you do that, when do you do that? Why do you get attracted to someone or something? What is it in somebody or something, that quality that is attracting you? Why do you get addicted to something? It can be good addiction, bad addiction. You can be addicted to reading a book. You can be addicted to watching something on TV. You can be addicted to the internet, addicted to Facebook, addicted to drugs, addicted to cigarettes, addicted to so many things. But why are you addicted? Was it, it, what is it that is causing you that addiction? And why do you hate? Even sometimes you have not even talked to your person. But the moment you look at the person, you start hating the person. Why do you hate the person? And why do you love someone? Even uh, that has no reason. Why do you love someone? Now, if you try to answer these questions, so you will be able to create a kind of awareness that is required for your own self. So, uh, that is under self-awareness. Let us go to the second trait, self-confidence. Now, ask these questions. Are you confident or are you overconfident? or are you lacking in confidence? You may be one of these two, uh, three categories and you may be confident at some time, some aspects of your life, but completely lacking in confidence in something else. Which part of your life you are lacking in confidence? Then, do you believe in you that you have strength and power within you to achieve anything that actually amounts to your confidence, that is the inner confidence. Okay, outside you are embarrassed with something and then you are not exhibiting a sense of confidence. But inside you, do you believe deeply in you that you have that power, you have that strength to accomplish whatever you want in your life? If you have it, you are confident. 
and if you do not, you need to develop. Mindset is again a very important skill set that you need to develop in terms of self-management skill set. The most important thing, do you have a positive or a negative mindset? Do you always see the rosy picture of life or always look at something that is gloomy? Is your mind looks at problems or comes out with solutions to problems? Are you a problem creator or a problem solver? So, there are people in any situation they will first look at the problems and there are others in any situation they always try to see the best possible solution that can be arrived at. What is it that your mind thinking about? Is it problem creating or solving the problems? Then the other aspect of mindset, do you have a rigid fixed mindset or a flexible growth mindset between fixed mindset and growth mindset? Some of these concepts I will be elaborating in the coming lectures, but right now at least you know what kind of mindset you have. If you have the fixed mindset, you are not open to ideas. Even you are not open to some course like this. So, you think that you know everything already. You just skeptically want to see what is happening in the course, but mind wise you are just fixed and you are refusing to learn anything new. Growth mindset people always know that there is so much to learn and then they make mistakes, but they learn from the mistakes. They develop, they enhance and then they grow. So, just see whether you are in the fixed or in the growth mindset. Is your mind looking for opportunity to learn and grow even in difficult situations or is your mind indulging in complaining and blaming others? So, some people own full responsibility. The mind thinks that I made the mistake, but in certain cases the mind thinks that it is not me, it is because of him, because of my parents, because of my boss, because of my son, because of my wife, because of my colleague friend, enemy, it happened, not because of me. So, what is your mind thinking? So, that determines your mindset. You need to have a growth mindset, you need to have a positive mindset if you really want to develop your personality. Now, let us look at the next three uh, skill sets that is with regard to emotional balance, handling stress and coping with failure. This again determines your personality as well as developing soft skills. Now, emotional balance, today emotional balance along with the next aspect that I am going to talk about that is spiritual intelligence. These two skill sets are supposed to be the predominant skill sets that determines whether you are going to be a very highly successful person. Successful not in materialistic terms, but in a holistic term whether you will be successful, whether you will be happy and peaceful in your life. So, these uh, two aspects alone are the ones they are determining as against the previous thinking that it is IQ that is intelligent quotient that is determining your level of success. Now, what is this EQ, emotional quotient, emotional intelligence and I call it as emotional balance. How good is your emotional literacy? That is emotionally, what do you know about yourself? When do you know that your emotions are in control? When do you know that you are losing your emotions? And the level of your emotional intelligence, what is your EQ? Are you able to control your emotions all the time with anybody? Is it with somebody you lose your emotions? Only with some people you are able to control it. Are you able to hide your feelings if you want to or the feelings are just being expressed non-verbally from your face, your eyes, your entire body? Are you not able to do? Do you feel weak before some people? with some people, especially if they happen to be your boss, do you feel intimidated? Suppose you are not that well off, do you feel somewhat intimidated and weak before powerful people, before rich people than you? So, do you have this kind of uh, emotional problems? Can you manage your negative emotions such as anger, frustration and hurt? If you are hurt for example, how do you act? react, you get angry, you shout at other people or just you calm yourself and then you introspect, retrospect, reflect on the things and then you come out with a solution to uh, minimize that kind of hurt in future. How do you act? 
Do you act magnanimously when people have hurt you? Do you act generously when people have hurt you? Or do you show the meanest of yourself when somebody has hurt you? So, that makes a huge difference. Can you think rationally and make objective decisions when you are consumed with your own emotion? That means, when you are completely charged in emotion, can you make any objective and rational decisions or will it be conditioned by your emotions? Are you afraid of sharing your innermost feelings? Can you share some of your innermost fears, apprehensions and then uh, even funniest thoughts with at least one person in a group? Is it possible? Can you share your love for someone without getting nervous? You know, all these qualities, if you ask yourself where you stand, is telling important clues about your emotional literacy. We will come back to this, but right now I just wanted to introduce this to you and keep asking these questions. In fact, you just ask this and then write and then reflect, write the answer, I am at this level, I am afraid of this person and then try to keep that consciously in your mind and then try to overcome that situation. Again, as I said, we will come back to overcoming sort, uh, some sort of emotional problems at a later stage. Now, about stress management handling stress. How do you handle stress? That also determines like how emotionally strong you are as a person and it also uh, tells about your self management skill set. With regard to handling stress, do you remain cool, calm and collected in any situations? Some people think that they will be able to remain cool only in an environment where their friends are there and their supporters are there. But in a hostile situation, in tough situations, will you remain calm and collected? Are you strained when you interact with people at personal and professional levels? At, you hate to go home, so you go to the bar and drink a lot and then go home and then uh, again get shouting, but then in your unconsciousness you do not hear anything and then you just uh, uh, go flat. Office, again you go. You do not want to face your colleague, you do not want to face your boss. Have you created such a conflicting, strainful situation there in both at home and office? Do you know how to come out of a stressful situation? Stress is something sometimes you know that is self induced, often it is not there, most of the times it is an illusion. These are all perceived threats. Now, once you realize that, do you know how to come out of a stressful situation? Are you aware that the less stressful you are, the more productive you will be? It is important that you remove stress and then you become more productive. Have you thought of that? Now, the next skill set is with regard to coping with failure. How are you going to deal with failure? Is failure actually a stepping stone for your success? Are you going to learn from your failure and then use that failure to make your success a great one or are you going to be bogged down with failure? How do you respond to failure? So, that again determines your personality. Do you have the resilience to bounce back after a setback? So, there are people even one small minor setback. So, they become so frustrated, so emotionally upset and they never stop trying again, they just stop it. Whereas, there are people who bounce back, they go to the depths of despair and then they come out of it and they rise again to an unbelievable height just because of the resilience, that is a soft skill. Do you have the persistence and perseverance, again other soft skills? to continue with your plan despite obstacles and oppositions? Do you have the willpower and determination to work with the same energy till your mission is accomplished? There are people who start with lots of enthusiasm and energy at the beginning of a project, but what happens when the project proceeds? After some time, they lose all energy and enthusiasm because they do not get support, they are not getting any encouragement. It is at this time, they need to believe in themselves, they have to have their inner core very strong, believe in the inner confidence self and then pull along. They need willpower, determination, perseverance, persistence, so that they can bounce back.
Now, let us look at the next three important skill sets that you need for uh, self management. Uh, I have put patience, tolerance and trustworthiness as one skill set, because they are more or less close to each other. Now, what do I mean by being patient? Why is it an important soft skill? Because you need to have the wisdom to remain calm when others rush. You might have heard of the proverb that fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Even when angels are afraid of taking a path, fools rush, they run. Now, even when wise people are afraid of doing something, so foolish people will commit that they will do it. Now, do you have the patience to understand this situation? Are you patient enough to wait for the right moment, right opportunity or impatiently you lose your temper, show that you are a short tempered person, commit to things which become very unpleasant and completely unfavorable for you. So, patience is a very important quality whether in personal or in professional relationships. Can you patiently wait for the appropriate time to initiate action? You need to wait for the most important time, so that you can initiate action when you think that it is appropriate and it will be beneficial to you and all others who are concerned in that. Do you have a high level of tolerance? <coughs> Today, intolerance has become a kind of mania throughout the world. People have become highly intolerant, intolerant of, intolerant of any kind of difference difference in terms of name, difference in terms of caste, religion, color, language, nationality. So, anything that is not same, so people are uh, sort of become intolerant, but I am not talking about that kind of intolerance, but tolerance as a kind of soft skill which you need to develop. Do you have a high level of tolerance? Some people become very intolerant when uh, people who have different kinds of qualities that annoys you, come and talk to you. So, you lose your temper. Now, do you have the tolerance? Can you tolerate people? Can you tolerate situations? Can you give a long rope to people? Can you, can you be the one who will always push the ball in the other person's court and then keep your side waiting? Will you remain tolerant? Can people trust you? Trustworthiness is another important soft skill that you need to develop in case you have not developed it yet. Are you responsible and committed along with trustworthiness? Do you speak the truth or occasionally tell lies or always tell only lies? Now, telling only lies can be fun, but then if you really want to develop your personality in the long run, it is not going to help. The more people can rely on your word as having 100 percent truth, the more people will trust you and then the more people will invest in you, the more people will come and give you success. So, it has to be a very trustworthy one linked with truth and integrity. Do you have good standards of honesty and integrity? Do you act ethically in all the things that you do? Do you behave in a morally good manner? Do you know what is morally right or wrong and do you always choose the right path? Are you ethically correct? Do you do things which you know that nobody is there, but even if people see that nothing will happen or are you doing things which are not ethically correct in the absence of your boss, in the absence of your parents, in the absence of uh, your partner. So, are you doing such things? So, ask these questions. And then perceptiveness, which I hinted in the previous lecture, is uh, something that you need to pay attention to the other person, especially when you are in interaction. Do you pay attention to the unspoken acts of communication? People often say one thing, but then they mean something different, something sometimes they mean exactly the opposite. They say something, their body language means exactly the opposite. Now, do you pay attention to the nonverbal cues, what their eyes tell, what their facial expressions indicate, 
are you able to look at that? Do you feel that often people say something, but they do not mean it or mean exactly the opposite? Is your mind open while listening to controversial ideas or your mind is filled with prejudice and then negative thoughts? Can you open it up? Do you understand people correctly? How often people come and tell you, oh, you never understand me, you have misunderstood me or people, do they come and tell you, you are the only person who understands me correctly. How many such people do you have in your life? Now, that shows that you are developing your maturity, emotional maturity in terms of perceptiveness. And then, uh, the last but not the least and the most important is this spiritual intelligence. Again, as I said, I will talk about this along with need achievement and self-actualization trait at a later lesson. But at this point, I want you to understand what is this spiritual intelligence. This is first of all nothing to do with religion. It is a high level of emotional intelligence, where you also realize that there are things that goes beyond your mind, body and feeling. There is something there is spirit, okay, that, that is something that is soul that has a connectedness with all other human beings, all other universe and that is something that you strike a chord with. Now, ask these questions and you will be able to understand what level of spiritual intelligence you are in. Do you rise your life to a higher spiritual level? Do people look up to us the role models? How many of you, uh, somebody said that the best way uh, you know that where you stand is the way your children talk about you and often they say that children take their parents as the role models. At least do your children take up you as the role model, okay, family level, but at a professional level, how many people can look at you as a role model? How many people are you inspiring? What is your high level of consciousness where others are aspiring to reach? Okay. And then, do you have the instinct in you to change the world and make it a better place? instead of only serving your selfish needs. Is there an instinct in you that like James Bond, you want to save the world, you want to protect it from enemies, you want to protect it from climate change, you want to do something so that you can save the people, make them in, live in a better place and you make your contribution so that the universe becomes slightly better, better because you did something about it. And then, do you transcend the mundane pettiness and live your noble self that is creative, loving, selfless, calm, compassionate, courageous and exemplary. If you live that noble life that is exemplary, so you are reaching that level of spiritual intelligence that is required to develop all the required soft skills. Now, uh, just think about all these questions, revise them once again, if required rewind, listen again and again and answer some of the questions which you think are not initially easy, reflect on them and at the end of it, I just want to tell you this and then finish this lecture. Think about this, when you develop your emotional intelligence and live with high spiritual intelligence, your life will be so clear and transparent that even if anyone speaks badly of you, no one would believe it. I wish you that you try to reach that level of transparency, so that people know you clearly, transparently and then speak very high of you. Wish you all the best, see you in the next lecture, thank you.